top stories of the night, uh, President Duterte defends Health Secretary Duque on the issue of deficiency in billions of funds. Philippine government administered almost 28 million vaccines. COVID-19 cases breaches over 100,000. Philippine National Police orders investigation and killing of tabloid business executive in Quezon City. DFA issued alert level 4 on the Filipinos in Afghanistan amid the security issue in the country. We bring you the latest happenings here and all over the globe. Good evening, my name is Alvin Palabello and this is EuroTV World News. President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday has defended the Department of Health on the alleged corruptions in the recent Commission and Audit report that showed DOH had and maximized uh, billions of funds. Alam mo, itong DOH, pati itong task force, both agencies are responsible in the war against COVID. Ang uh, Department of Health, yun sila yung punong-puno na kung mabili uh, at times madali an emergency there is no there is no just uh, space for them to maghintay pa ng requisition ganang gano anak na po tabuhay ang pinag-usapan natin dito so you better just also I, I'd like to remind ko ah, look May auditors man nakabase dyan. Like Davao City, there is a Davao City auditor. Tanggalin na lang ninyo yung auditor-auditor dyan sa baba. Kalukuhan yan. Eh, bali. Eh, ano lang pala ninyo eh. Di, isang, isang audit na lang sa inyo lang. Para isa. President Duterte has also refused to fire Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. He also expects that Duque will submit his resignation after that meeting but rejected it outright. Duterte has understated the COA's findings and insists that they are pointing out on a missing paperwork and no to corruption. COA recently said as much as they've called for a more deeper investigation into how funds are being handled. President has cited COA to stop publishing their audit reports since this affects government official in the agency. They're pointing out. Stop that flagging, God damn it. You make a report, do not flag. Do not uh, publish it because it will condemn the agency or the person that you are flagging. The flagging is spelled F. L A G G E D. Ang ginagawa ninyo is F L O G G I N G. Flagging. Hampas. Eh, wag naman sige kayo flag ng flag, flag ng flag. Tapos wala namang na preso, wala naman lahat. And yet you know that when you flag, there is already a taint of corruption. By perception. This is not the first time that President has cursed COA. It was uh, 2018 when he joked that he would throw an Ilocos Norte auditor down the stairs. And in 2019, he even joked about kidnapping and torturing auditors, uh, making the life harder for the government officials. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III gets emotional during the Committee on Health hearing on Tuesday as he exclaimed against the Commission on Audit Report showing deficiencies on the billion of, of funds. As he faced legislators on the House of Representatives, Duque has admitted that he and the DOH personnel have lost sleep due to shame as they were bloodied and bulgeoned in this issue. He even pleaded that the issue has caused damage on their dignity pertaining to the OH personnel, including himself. Noong Wednesday na lumabas po ito, hindi na po ako nakakatulog. Ang mga kasama kong mga opisyal sa DOH, hindi na rin halos nakakatulog. Bakit kami nyo? Sa kahihiyan? Sa, we were bloodied and blood virgin, you know, with this issue. Kung ganito nang ganito tayo, paano tayo uunlad? Winarap na ninyo kami eh. Winarap na ninyo. Ang dangal ng DOH. Winarap ninyo ang lahat ng mga kasama ko dito. 
hindi kami makaharap sa mga tao dahil lahat, ang dami-daming sinasabi, ang dami-daming paratang. Wala pa rin akong tulog. Ilang gabi na po ito. On COWAS audit report, there are deficiencies caused by the non-compliance pertinent to the laws and regulations that have led to missed opportunities and contributed to challenges on the health crisis in the country brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are no corruptions mentioned on COAS report. Instead, Duque were asked to implement various recommendations and asked to conduct investigations on the irregulations with the COVID-19 funds. Duque, however, insisted that DOH should have been allowed to reply or issue rejoinders to the COA report that is not conclusive, but they let the audit document step on the DOH dignity. House Deputy Speaker Rodante Marcoletas questioned COA on releasing inconclusive audit reports that affect people's emotion on the reports that are not yet final. In COA's response, they said that they have not released information on media and maintaining that the Commission was mandated to review the expenditures of the certain agency. Nearly 30 million Filipinos had been inoculated of COVID-19 vaccines. Based on the National Task Force on COVID-19 report, there are almost 28 million Filipinos who received COVID-19 jabs. Out of this number, more than 15 million received their first dose and more than 12.5 million are fully vaccinated. On the other hand, the Department of Health has recorded more than 11,000 new COVID-19 cases, raising the active cases into more than 105,000. More than 11,600 tagged as new recoveries added into a total of more than 1.6 million recoveries. 161 added into a death toll, bringing the number of deaths into more than 30,600. Vaccines would no longer work after a month of inoculation. A fear allayed by a member of the Department of Science and Technology vaccine expert panel amid the reports that antibodies generated also declines as time goes by. According to infectious disease expert Dr. Ront Jean Solante, aside from neutralizing antibodies, vaccines also generates this they called the cell-mediated immunity of the T-cells, a cell that responds to the viral infections as well as a uh, stimulate immune response along with another type of uh, lymphocyte called B-cells even after the decrease on the level of vaccines generated antibodies. Solante even said that these uh, T-cells or memory cells are responsible for durability of protection that were able to recall antibodies upon recognizing viral infections like COVID-19. Meanwhile, Solante added that elderly immunocompromised patients and post-transplant patients that suppresses their immune system through medications make them at the high risk of developing severe COVID-19. In the current data, Solante said that fully vaccinated and has complete two jobs of COVID-19 vaccines are still protected from the developing severe to critical illness. Despite of the presence of more transmissible COVID-19 variants, as seen by some, booster shots were necessary to be able to sustain protection from the disease. But in the Philippines, due to unstable supply of COVID-19 vaccines, booster shots are not yet allowed as the government aims to vaccinate first a large number of population. The Department of the Interior Local Government recognized more than 15,000 establishments over the country amid the COVID-19 pandemic. A safety seal has been given to this establishment as a reward. To give us more details, his Vanessa Cleofas. A total of 15,687 private and public establishments all over the country has awarded a safety seal certification by the local government unit shows that they complies with the minimum public health standards set by the government. According to DILG spokesperson and Interior Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya said that 15K establishments, around 4,000 are government buildings or establishment that had been issued of safety seal certificate by the DILG, with a number of local government units being visited by the department officials for the ceremonial installation of the safety seal. Malaya added that the safe to seal address through issues prevention that aims people from getting infected by requiring establishments 
to comply MPHS and encourage individual to visit business establishments that implemented health and protocols against COVID-19. Among the 18 regions in the country, Malaya said that the National Capital Region has the highest total number of establishments issued with the safety seal. The DILG started the implementation of the safety seal program in late May, with issuing authorities awarding safety seal to Mandaluyong, Valenzuela, Paranaque, Manila, Taguig, Pasig, Marikina, Quezon City, Pasay, Caloocan, Muntinlupa, Pateros, and Makati establishment, while SM Center to Gigarao Downtown, that also received safety seal certification last July from that, they followed health and safety protocols by being the first mall to have 100% vaccinated frontliners. This is Vanessa Cleofas for Euro TV World News. A renowned political scientist and former University of the Philippines President Dr. Jose Abueva has died on Wednesday at the age of 93. Abueva has a signatory on the now abrogated UPDND Accord of 1989. On a Facebook post of his daughter Rosana, she confirmed that his father died peacefully in, in his home in Beverly Hills, Antipolo Rizal. Abueva served as a UP president or University of the Philippines president in 1987 to 1993 and also served as UP Diliman's chancellor from 1990 to 1991. Abueva served as, sec as secretary to 1971 Constitutional Convention. A year later, the Grace President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and proclaimed in force the new charter by 1973. He was also served as a chairperson of the Legislative Executive Military Basis Council from 1989 to 1990. And on 2005, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo named him as a chairperson of the Consultative Constitutional Commission. He and President Fidel Ramos has signed the accord on 1989 between the UP and the Department of National Defense. The agreement has been terminated by the Department of National Defense under the Duterte's administration due to unproven claims that UP was engaged in recruiting students to armed movement. The Philippine National Police has ordered authorities to conduct thorough investigation in the killing of tabloid business executive in Quezon City on Tuesday afternoon. On his Facebook announcement, PNP Chief General Police Guillermo Eliazar said that he has tasked Quezon City Police District and adding they were coordinating with the Presidential Task Force on Media Security to hold accountable on this incident. I have already tasked the QCP the District Director, Police Brigadier General Tony Yara, to conduct a thorough investigation on this incident. Magipagunay din kami sa Presidential Task Force on Media Security upang mabilis ang pagsagawa ng investigasyon at mapanagot ang lahat ng nasa likod ng krimeng ito. I am also directing all police officers and units to sustain anti-criminality operations and to be on alert for criminals who would take advantage of the pandemic. We need to ensure that the public is not only safe from coronavirus infection but also safe from lawless elements. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security strongly condemns the killing of former journalist. According to Media Security Executive Director Under Secretary Joel C. Egko, they seen that the suspect has a personal motive on the victim as he described Salamida as a good friend and former colleague. They have already directed law enforcement agencies to use all available resources to hunt down and bring justice the perpetrators of this heinous crime. A 41-year-old Gwen Salamida was shot dead by two unidentified suspects inside their business-owned salon in Barangay Apolonio in Quezon City on Tuesday afternoon, while her live-in partner, Oliver Perona, sustained gunshots or gunshots once and was brought to the hospital. The authorities are still conducting investigation on the incident. Following the hegemony of Taliban forces in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, on August 15, the Department of Foreign Affairs has issued mandatory evacuation of the Filipinos in the country. In the advisory posted by the department, out of 132 Filipinos in Afghanistan so far, they have been evacuated 32 or 35 Filipinos amid a security issue between the Taliban forces and the government of Afghanistan. Taliban forces has finally occupied 
the nation's capital following the repatriation of Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani. Based on the report, Ghani has left the capital after hearing explosions on Kabul and gunshots near the airport where several foreigners and diplomats wanted to exit the country. According to President Ghani, he chose to leave or evacuate to elude the widespread bloodshed, the reason why Taliban finally occupies Kabul. Presidential palace are now in hand of Taliban forces as well as districts around the capital. Taliban had advanced quickly after the United States withdrew their forces in Afghanistan following the decision of U.S. President Joe Biden to end the long war in the country. In line with this, people continue to flock in Kabul International Airport as they want to leave the country immediately. While different countries have repatriated their officials and citizens in the country, meanwhile, different groups in America condemns the seizure of Taliban forces and the decision that was made by Biden increasing their forces or seizing their forces in Afghanistan. After confirming the first local transmission of COVID-19 case, New Zealand's Prime Minister Hasinda Ardern has announced a nationwide lockdown. In a press conference on Tuesday, Ardern said the authorities assuming this case was a contagious Delta variant and genome sequencing is still underway. According to Health Director General Ashley Bloomfield, an unvaccinated 58-year-old man from Auckland has tested positive for the virus and added that this man has traveled or had traveled history in other parts of the country. The Level 4 lockdown will take an effect on Tuesday and for the next three days. New a New Zealand lockdown, aside from essential services such as uh, supermarkets and uh, pharmacies, all businesses are closed and, if, and everyone must stay at home. It was a year ago when New Zealand was last placed under its serious lockdown level. Here's the latest COVID-19 situations over the globe. That has been the stories of the night, new stories you need to know. You can always check out our social media accounts for more latest happenings here and all over the globe. Thank you for joining me this evening. My name is Alvin Colabello and this is EuroTV World News.